Hello, and welcome to the Family Support Grant Plan Writing Overview Training. The family will complete a FSG plan once they confirm that their child meets the FSG eligibility guidelines. Eligibility requirements include age restriction, residency, income limit, disability certification, and confirmation of not currently using PCA or waivered services. The Hennepin County FSG administrators are the only ones who can approve a FSG plan. Case managers or their supervisors do not have the authority to approve FSG plans. Please contact the FSG team with any questions you may have on eligibility prior to submitting a plan. We are reviewing the first section of page one. Enter the child's full name and date of birth on the first two lines. Second, enter the parent or guardian's name and phone number. Note, if both parents' names are not listed, we can only communicate with the parent whose name is listed. Enter the household address. No, must be a Hennepin County address. Next, enter the date you are sending in the application and list an email address where the FSG team can send correspondences. We are now reviewing page one, section two of the FSG plan. Circle Y for yes or N for no to the question verifying that the FSG applicant is under age 25. Circle Y for yes or N for no to the question verifying that the applicant is living in Hennepin County. Circle Y for yes or N for no to the question verifying that the household income is within the income limits. Note, we do require income verification, such as check stubs, tax returns, W-2s, and public assistance proof. If the applicant is over 18, we only look at their income. Note, if the applicant is over 18 and you are their guardian, we will need proof of guardianship. Then you will check the applicable boxes that best describe the applicant's disability certification. State if the applicant is receiving PCA or waivered services. If yes, please list the program type. We are now reviewing page one, section three of the plan. You will list the applicant's medical diagnosis that meets their disabled criteria and any other diagnoses that they may have. Next, you will describe any medical concerns or safety needs. For example, list daily efforts made to keep the person safe or things done to support their health and well being. The next question is for applicants ages 14 to 24. You will add how the FSG funds can help with the transitional goals they may have. For example, the person is interested in learning how to drive. Adaptive driving classes may be included in the plan. We are now reviewing page two, section one of the plan. Enter the date you will submit the plan. Note, the FSG team will enter the date the plan is received. Then, enter the applicant's name and date of birth. Next, enter the parent and or guardian's name and phone number. Note, if both parents or guardians are to be contacted, please list both. We are unable to talk to the second parent or guardian if they are not listed. Next, you will enter the applicant's address. Then, you will enter the applicant's case manager's name 
agency and phone number. We are unable to speak to any case manager if they are not listed on this application or if we do not have a release of information on file. We are now reviewing page 2, section 2 of the plan. This is where you will begin listing the services or supports that you want to implement into the plan. Under the first column, list the specific support and the vendor name. The second column, you will list how the item is related to the person's disability and how it will assist with supporting the person. The third column is where you will list the cost of the item, including any shipping costs or additional fees. You may add additional pages if three rows are not enough room to add all the items you are seeking for approval. The last line requires the parent or guardian signature and date signed. The application will be incomplete if it is not signed and dated. We are now reviewing page three of the plan. Enter the FSG applicant's name and the date you will send the application. Next, enter the parent or guardian's name who will manage the FSG grant. The additional information on this page lists the Hennepin County and Department of Human Services FSG program rules and criteria, which the managing party will consent to. Please read each criteria and ensure that the items in the plan fit within the rules. We are now reviewing page four of the application. This page continues to list the remaining Hennepin County and Department of Human Services FSG program rules and criteria, which the managing party will consent to. Please read each criteria and ensure that the items in the plan fit within the rules. The managing party will need to sign and date listed at the bottom of the page. We are now reviewing page five of the application. This form is required when a service is requested that is not adaptive and the agency is willing to implement a plan to meet the health and safety needs of your child while providing the service with making necessary adaptations. Please fill in information on each line as it relates to the application and agency provider details. Provide a description on how the agency plans to provide necessary adaptations. The parent and program contact signature, date, and printed name are required. The application is incomplete if the family is requesting a non-adaptive service without this form completed. We are now reviewing the last page, number six, of the application. You will need to complete a billing request form for each vendor listed on the plan. For example, you requested a driving assessment from Courage Kinney, behind the wheel training with Courage Kinney, and adaptive swimming at Foss Swim School. You would complete two billing request forms, one for Courage Kinney and one for Foss Swim School. The employer identification number also known as an EIN, or tax identification number, also known as TIN, is required for each vendor listed, or the application will be incomplete. You will need to sign and date each billing request form. You may add additional pages if needed. Finally, we are reviewing the required legal consent form that allows us to communicate with the vendors on the application. The Hennepin County Release of Information will need to be completed for each vendor listed on the application. 
This allows us to speak with them to coordinate the eligibility and approval process. It also allows us to list identifying information on the check that will be sent to them, such as an account number and or your child's name. Your application will be incomplete if these are not received for each vendor. Please reach out to the FSG team at the contact information on the next slide if you have any questions pertaining to this application or your FSG status. Thank you for taking the time and watching this presentation.